Well, hey, everybody. Hey. How y'all doing? Good. I'm so glad you can see me. Tonight, we're going to be in 2 Timothy, the first chapter. 2 Timothy, the first chapter, verses 1 through 7. Stir up the gift of God is the title of it. Stir up the gift of God. And hello, everybody out there on the internet. I pray you all had a wonderful day today. Some of you folks up north there, I hope you're not snowed in. Uh, but I tell you, like I told everybody this morning up north there, you left your door open, come and get this cold weather out of here. It was 25 this morning at my house, and that's way too cold for Florida. Amen? Amen. amen. Whoa, I got an amen that time. <laughs> All right. I'm going to read now verses 1 through 7. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, according to the promises of which is in uh, Jesus, uh, Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God, and, uh, the Father, and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God, whom I serve with a pure conscience, as my forefathers did, and, uh, as without ceasing, I remember you always, day and night, in prayer. I remember you in my prayers, day and night. Greatly desiring to see you, but mindful of your tears, that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, that dwell first in your grandmother, Lois, and your mother, Eunice, and I am persuaded in you also. Therefore, I remind you to stir, stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the laying out of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of the power of love and of a sound mind. Father God, as I open your word here this evening, Lord, first off, Father, I want to lift up Tanner to you, Lord. Tanner has been having some throat problems, so his tonsils, God. I just pray, Father, that the medicine he's taken, Lord, will help him. If not, Lord, just please touch him and heal him. Lord, for uh, Miss uh, Nadine, I want to lift her up to you, God. I pray for her and for Miss, uh, uh, Paul, Mr. Paul, Miss Betty, Lord, and Miss Flora Walker, Lord. I pray for her, God, that you just help her, Lord. And God, thank you for their faithfulness and watching and learning yet, Lord. And no matter what age, we're still a learning group. God, may we never get old of that. And Lord, thank you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Okay, what is the gift of God? If we're gonna celebrate it, we need to know what it is. Amen? Amen. amen. All right, let's look at this. Measure of faith, I think, is a gift of God. He gives us faith. We walk by faith. We, by we just, we're saved by faith, by grace and mercy from our Lord Jesus Christ. Measure of faith. The, one of the greatest gifts is the forgiveness of our sins. Amen? Amen. All right. Yeah. Ooh. I'll tell you what, without that, we might as well go home, go fishing. You know? Just watch football. <laughs> I got to laugh, but I ain't get no amens. That's good. <laughs> amen. I'm a little worried on that one. Eternal life. You say, but Pastor, you know, people die all around us every day. How can you have eternal life? Because I'm going to tell you right now, I'm glad you asked that question. I'm going to tell you the answer right now. You're going to have eternal life. If you're a born again Christian and you've got the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, you know what? You're going to have eternal life with Him. With Him. I mean, not some, uh, what well, they used to have that old country song, just a little old shack on the edge of glory land, a cabin or something it was on the edge of glory land. No, no, no. My master is up there right now building me a mansion. Yeah, it said so. He said if he was not so, he would have, you know, he would have told us. But he's coming back for us. He's coming back again. Think about that. 2,000 years he's been building on my mansion. Yours too, by the way. Uh, yours, I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for the top floor. I want to be able to see the all new Jerusalem when it comes down. Eternal life. The Holy Spirit. This is 
a biggie. God gives us the Holy Spirit. So when you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, the Holy Spirit says, comes in and dwells your heart, comes to live with you. And why? Because to be a comforter, be a teacher, you know, just lead us and direct us in, in all things. That's wonderful. We're not left out here on it by ourselves. We're not left to go about stumbling around in the dark. God sent us a comforter. He sent us the Holy Spirit to guide us, to be a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. That's the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you what, that's better than an Uber, any Uber driver. He's going, the Holy Spirit's going to get you where you need to be. The Uber driver just gets you where you want to go. That's sometimes the wrong place. Amen. 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 All right. I'm glad we got some honest people here tonight. <laughs> All right. A heavenly home is one going to be one of the gifts. I've already talked about it. Think how beautiful it's going to be, that heavenly home. We've been looking at it. I really love a, a show, and, and Dolly does too. We both love watching it. Buying Alaska and Living in Alaska, these two programs. And they show these homes these people are buying and everything. And some of them are absolutely beautiful. But I just can't help thinking all the time I'm watching it, how beautiful our home's going to be in heaven. Amen. Made by the hands of Jesus. Because it says, I go to prepare a place for you. All right? Didn't he say that? Yeah. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I'll come back for you. That's another promise. Two great promises right there. He's going to prepare a place for us. And he's coming back for us. He's not going to leave us here in this nasty now and now. We're going to go up there in glory. In glory land. Oh, I'm so looking forward. The complete word of God. Yeah, you know, the Jewish people back in the Old Testament, that's all they had was the Old Testament. And some of them, if you go back far enough, they didn't even have that. They had the first five books of the Bible that Moses wrote, the Talmud, right? Am I saying that word right? The Talmud. The first five books of the Bible. We have 66 books of the Bible. We've got the complete Bible. Y'all read it? Y'all look at it once in a while? Do you walk by it and kind of dust it off? Because it's so, nothing more funny than when I go visit people and they got that big old family Bible sitting on the coffee table that hasn't been opened in 14 years and you see that much dust on it and you know that they haven't read it. And I say, oh, what a beautiful Bible. <coughs> they can't dust it off because I'm sitting right there. You know, but I think they would really wish they had, had it dusted off. It had some fingerprints on the pages that had it open to a passage or something. But no, I got it. Gotcha. His presence. That's a gift. That's a gift. Folks, you don't think you're in, in the presence of God? My Bible says this, where two or more are gathered, there I am also. Guess why we're here tonight? Whose name are we gathered in? The Lord Jesus Christ. That's the reason we're here. And you know what? He's here with us. Isn't that a promise? Huh? Amen, I mean, we're not sitting here in some wishy-washy place and we're hoping that something happened. Folks, the prayer is an almighty, all-encompassing thing if you use it. If you don't use it, you might as well just forget it. Because I'll tell you, it, God wants to hear from you. Every little thing in your life He wants to talk to you about. You know what? Not just talk to Him, but listen to Him. How can I do that, Pastor? I don't ever hear him speak. Well, it's hard. It's hard. But I think Michael's t talking about we need to pay attention to every little thing God does in our life. Sometimes we say, Whoo, am I lucky? I am so lucky. No, not I'm blessed. Amen. I'm blessed. God blesses me. How do I know? Because He's there. I know he wants the best for me. And he wants the best for y'all. If you're, if you're his children, he wants the best for you. You don't love your children and say, I'll give you a, you ask for a bread and I'll give you a rock. You ask for something, I'll give you a snake. No. He gives you the best of everything. Well, Pastor, I want that home. That million dollar home, set in the, with the, in the garage, that hundred, now how much of those 
The Ferraris that your son works with? Three million. Three million dollar car sitting in the garage. A few million. A few million, okay. <coughs> Probably, let's say three million, it's more impressive. Three million dollar car sitting in the garage, you know, and then you think, oh my gosh. People have that. Are they happy? I don't know. I, I, see, I see these people that, that take and, and, and uh, uh, they, they have all this wealth and all this money and they're the most unhappiest people in the world. People say, well, money can make me happy. It doesn't really, mm -hmm. doesn't give you peace. That is more than It's You know, it's, it's the love of money is, is the root of all evil. The love of money. And it's just a shame because they wrap everything they've got around their wallet, around their bank account. Then, you know what? When you get that million dollar home, the first thing you got to do, build a 12 foot fence around them. Keep everybody else out. Because otherwise they're going to come take it from you. Well, the love of God is more rich than any amount of money on the planet. Preach it, brother. That is so true. Yes, that is so true. The love of God is more precious that, and, and the love that God shows towards us. He sent his only son, Jesus, to die for us. You know, and I said uh, so many times, I love all you folks, but I wouldn't send one of my sons to the cross for you. Now, I'm just being honest with you now. I wouldn't ask him to do that. But God loved us that much. You folks with children, think about that one. Think about that one. How much he loved us. Yes. Well, I remember, I remember here again, I'm going to tell you how excited I was when I first got saved. I wanted to tell everybody, every, oh man, I got saved yesterday at church. Yeah. You went to church? <laughs> really? <laughs> Woo! The roof didn't fall in? I said, no, sir, it didn't. But well, I've already sheltered under there, though, because I was just so happy. But I gotta tell you now, I started looking at everything different. I didn't have the same want to's I had before that. I didn't have the same I should's as I had before that. Why? Because God changed that for me. You know, and I even lost some friends, so-called friends. But God replaced them with much better friends. And I could get up in the morning without a hangover without a headache. God took care of that. Can I get an amen on that? Amen, amen brother. <laughs> All, right. All right. Thank you. Well, if we saw everything, it was like we, I saw everything for the first time. Dolly's going to have some cataract surgery here. Oh, I forgot the date of it. But when we get back from Tampa, I got to go to Tampa the third for my, check up. And uh, uh, I was kept telling her, I said, "Hun, when you get that cataract surgery, when they take that off your eye, you're going to see everything like for the first time. So everything's going to be brighter. Everything's going to be clearer. You know, it's just, uh, I, it's just so wonderful. I remember when I had mine done. I go, whoa, whoa, is this the same world I've been living in all these years? I couldn't believe it, how clear it was. And I, it's just so beautiful. God created us a beautiful world. We ruined it, but that's another story. That's another sermon. But our attitude was different. My attitude was different. My attitude was different. It's still, sometimes that old man keeps trying to sneak back in. Of course, Dolly points it out every time he does, come and try to come into my life. And she's quick to point it out, too, by the way. Uh, oh, I, I promised I wouldn't pick on her. But anyway, We're anyway. We're glad you got her. Huh? We're glad you got her. Yeah, me too. Me too. I tell you what, God bless me, dude. Yeah. Sure did. All right, that's enough. She'll be wanting to raise. All right. Things for others you wanted to tell everyone or someone about you being saved. I, uh, I told everyone I could at work that day. But a lot of them had no idea what I was talking about being saved and accepting the Lord as my Savior. Except my boss. 
Dick Smith, his name was. He says, Jim, he says, I was raised over in Bradenton. And I was in a Baptist church all the time. I was over there being raised. And he said, I know exactly what you're talking about. I said, Dick, am I crazy? Am I going crazy or what's going on? He said, no. He says, it's a good reaction you got when you get excited about it. But when my son, uh, Rick, my oldest boy, did my ordination sermon, he says, Dad was just, he just carried on and on and on. He says, my brother and I got to talking about it. He says, oh, it's just another phase Dad's going through and he'll get over it just like everything else. But you know what? He said he hasn't got over it yet. And I don't want to get over it. I'm excited about it. I'm excited about the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm excited about his love towards me. And I'm excited that I have so much love towards him. He's, he's so special. He's so wonderful. And yet, people try to say, ah, he was a good guy. But that's all. They won't admit he's the son of God. They won't admit that he's our savior. Because you know why? Just like when I got saved, I changed. They don't want to change. They want to stay the same they are today. Formally around through life. Yeah, hey man, yeah, okay. Hey dude, you know. Yeah, I tell you. <laughs> They're about as smart as a billy goat. You know, they're not too smart. But it's just amazing how people will try to put down the Lord Jesus Christ. They'll try to put down people that love him and worship him and want to tell people about him. You know what? And, and people need to hear. This world today needs to hear about Jesus Christ. Okay? Amen. Fountain needs to hear about Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. The Bay County needs to hear about Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, then what are we going to do about it? Go and tell. Go and tell. There you go. Go and tell. Go and tell it on the mountain. Yeah. All right. But more social than spiritual churches have become more compromised instead of conviction. We have established a social time of gathering instead of a time to grow in grace and of the knowledge of the truth. We have come to a place of accepting sin as something that isn't as bad as it used to be. Isn't it as bad as it used to be? You know, after all, if everybody's doing it, doesn't that make it right by the rule of majority? Doesn't that make the world right over God? Doesn't that make us, you know, us all foolish for not wanting to join in? They are so wrong. The world is so wrong. But yet, you know, I, I, I can't, I have a hard, hard time sometimes understanding it. God, your patience is beyond my belief. Because I'll tell you the truth, if I had my thumb on the button, it would have been over a long time ago. You know what? It would have been done. But God wants everyone to get saved. But yet we know that not everyone will be saved. Why? Because they're just too bullheaded. Huh? Amen. Is that putting it plain enough? They're just too bullheaded. I don't want to change my style of living. I had one kid tell me one time, Pastor, I'm not going to get saved. I want to keep on, I'm going to hell, and I'm going to be down there, me and my friends are going to party, 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 party. <laughs> I looked at him and laughed. I said, son, you don't know anything about hell, do you? You just, you just think it's some funny guy down there in red pajamas, a red long underwear. You know, and just uh, roasting marshmallows on that pitchfork. You know, just having a good time, having some s'mores. He didn't understand the torment and the torture. The separation from God, from any opportunity whatsoever of being in heaven. Folks, and you folks out there on the internet, if you can hear my voice tonight, please, please do not tempt that 
that worry and say, well, I can get saved some other time. I, I'm too young to get saved. I, I want to I wanna go on with my friends. And then maybe when I'm old, like that old preacher standing up there, maybe I'll take and, and, and think about it. My brother was the same way, by the way. He was in his, he'd have been in his 80s, 79, 80, something like that. And I used to try to talk to him for years, I tried talking to him. And he says, no, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear it. I know you love me and all that, but he said, I just don't want to hear it. So finally he was ready. The Holy Spirit got a hold of him. And when I got up there that, to Michigan, I spent a month with him there. I took a Bible to him. Nice Bible, giant print because his eyesight was getting so bad. Had his name embossed on it in gold, you know, and everything. Really, really fancy, first class. And I give it to him, and the yeah, officer, most of you in here have already heard this story, but I'm going to tell it again because it's just so good. Tears started coming to his eyes. And I just sat there, and his children were there, his daughter and, and one of his sons were there. And I said, Brother, I said, when you pass from this life, where do you want to spend eternity? Heaven or hell? That was the exact question I asked him. He didn't think over 10 seconds. Heaven. Well, let's do something about that then. I said, are you ready to do that? Yes. Yes, I am. Praise God, I was saying, because all the way up there I was praying, Holy Spirit, please go in front of me. Touch his heart. Prepare it, Lord, because it's been so hard all these years. Well, he accepted the Lord right there. He prayed the sinner's prayer and accepted the Lord. His daughter was crying, his son was crying, I was crying, everybody was crying. And you know what? He got involved in church. We went to church that next Sunday where his daughter goes to church, Good Baptist uh, Church, up there in, uh, I forget the name of the town now. Anyway, uh, he went there, and that Tuesday, the next Tuesday morning, a man came up from the church to teach him the Bible, to hold private classes there in his house. And my brother says, you know what? He said, I had it. they really liked me there <laughs> to do that. I said, you missed it all these years, all these years. But son, you're going to heaven now. You're on your way. And that's, that. Uh, he passed away that, that following year. Uh, just well, yeah, he passed away just before the hurricane, or just after the hurricane. And uh, his son called me up and he said, Uncle Jim, he says, thank you so much. And Chad was crying. He said, thank you so much for what you did for my dad. And I said, that wasn't me doing it, son. That was the Lord. That was the Lord. It was all in his timing. All right. But let someone else do this for us. Yeah. That's a, that's we have become such a place of complacency. Instead of taking an, an expectancy, uh, we, we're just happy that we're here. We're just, I'm so happy I'm in church tonight. Because the pastor didn't even look at me once, and I feel safe now. I just, don't, don't look at me, pastor. I'll, I'll, I'll hold him, him low up. Oh, we're done singing hymns, but he can't tell that. You know, I just tell him, I'm so, I'm so joyful in my heart, I'm going to hum the hymns. You know, he's blocking them. No. Folks, I want you to come here hungry. I want you to come here like, I just can't wait to hear the word of God. I just can't wait to sing them songs praising God. Amen? Amen. Is that way how you're going to come here? Hungry. Huh? Like I go home. Hungry. Right, honey? Right. Hungry. And that's the way we should come in here. Hungry for the word of God. Amen. Well, Romans 8, 28 says, We know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, for those who are called according, according to His purpose. Oh, uh, that's for sure. That is so true. God blesses the workers that work for Him. He blesses us. Okay? God said, it would, God said He would do what we cannot do. You ever had an, a, a, a something in front of you that you needed to do? Build something, paint something, do something that took you out of your comfort zone. Get up out of your chair, get out of your recliner, you know, uh, talk to somebody on the phone, say, hey, 
Miss Miss Betty, uh, Miss uh, whatever. Uh, when you haven't seen you in church last week, and maybe even the week before, how you doing? All right. How you doing? Just make a phone call. It doesn't take a big amount of thing. Just make a phone call. Well, I want you to know I'm praying for you. I want you to know I'm praying for you. Yeah. But it says this. <laughs> Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. But it also says that if God be for you, who can be against you? But it did in Romans 6.23. What does that say? Somebody quote that for me. Uh-oh. 6.23. For the wages of sin is death. That's right. Through Christ Jesus. Through Christ Jesus our Lord and Savior. Yeah. The wages of sin is death. That's something you earn by sinning. You earn it. It's yours. You know, don't be proud of it. But you know what? There's salvation that is free. All you have to do is accept it. It's been paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ. Ooh, I'm telling you. I like getting free gifts. I do. I like Christmas time. Yeah. But Dolly tricked me this year. She gave me stuff I had to work. You know, like a new shovel, a new axe, you know, a new handsaw. No, numbers to put up on the mailbox. You did that, didn't you? Yeah, I did that. I'm out there trying to put them up. I'm not very good at carpentry work, but I got them on there. Of course, they're not in order the way they should be. My address is 988, so 898. I won't have to worry about anybody stopping it. Just... <laughs> All right. Listen, folks, I think I've just about talked up to here this, this evening, and I hope you've all Enjoy hearing the Word of God. I hope that we'll grow together with the Word of God. Because if we're not growing, we're not going. Simple as that. We need to be growing spiritually. Not just in numbers, but spiritual growth. Thank you for listening to me and all my foolishness. And you folks out there on the internet, thank you for watching. I just pray you have a wonderful, blessed week. Father God, as we come to the close of this service, Lord, I just pray, Father, for the, all the ones that are listening on the internet, for all the folks that are sitting here this evening. Lord, I just pray, God, that your hand of protection will be around them, over them, keep them safe, keep their home safe, Lord. And God, thank you for them. Thank you for their faithfulness of being here. Lord, for the ones that couldn't make it, like for Tanner, who's not feeling well. Be with him, Father, and help him. Thank you, God. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen and amen. amen. Thank you. Amen.